Jesus. Father, in the name of Yahweh. Our commitment, Sally Kitina, we bow down, we bow down, say we bow. And worship Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. You are king. I am the master of
the reason for today. Ah. And we lift your name, your name. We lift your name. Kabara. Kanamana. to Shiloh. Year in, year out, she was going to Shiloh. But there was a certain Shiloh that she never forgot. You are in that meeting that you will never forget. There was a certain Shiloh that a generation will never, she cannot forget. That Shiloh was a Shiloh where she activated the bet of Samuel. I don't know if you have something to bet. Shake your body and say, I'm ready. I'm here to bet it. Hallelujah. Please have your seat in God's presence. And when you're sitting, you sit like someone that is ready to activate. So your sitting position will not be the same with the other person. You know why? What you're activating is not the same with what I am activating. Praise the Lord. If you have testimonies, please be on this side and then you meet Minister Abibad there. Please, if you have testimonies, if you have testimonies, our hands are waving. If you have testimonies, please go on the side. Praise the Lord. I have one assignment here, and it's to welcome you to church. And it's to welcome you to Activate Conference, Activate Grace 2024. And I'm excited. It's a huge privilege to welcome you to church. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. I thought you'd be excited. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. 
Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. Welcome to Eden Life Experience Center. Praise the Lord. Here in Eden, we have the mandate to facilitate God's people to encounter Him and ensure that their great mandate is being um, manifested. Praise the Lord. And then we have three slogans that is summarizing this. That is encounter, equipping, and what? I take it again. We do what? We encounter. We are equipping. And then we do exploit. Praise the Lord. Our services are always on Sundays like this. And then we also have a service on Thursday. The Sunday service before today used to be 9 o'clock. But after today, we will activate two services. Praise the Lord. After today, we will be activating two services. So from next week, Sunday, our first service will start by 8.30 a.m., our second service will start by 10.30 a.m. Praise the Lord. And this service will be holding in number 10, Adekunle Fajui. Praise the Lord. We'll not be here next week Sunday. We're going back to Adekunle Fajui. And then on Thursday by 6 p.m., we'll be meeting on YouTube and um, Instagram. Praise the Lord. By 6 p.m. Praise the Lord. Our... Um, social media handles for Instagram Pastor Benga Ajibola for YouTube Pastor Benga Ajibola for Instagram also we have Eden Life Global, praise the Lord and then we also have Euro Tolu, praise the Lord and then our YouTube channel, we have Pastor Benga Jibola, we encourage you to subscribe to it. Praise the Lord. And if you know this house, we usually pray first 14 days. And what it is, what is it called? What is it called? It's a platform of prayers, it's a pl platform for possibilities, and it's a platform for what? And it's a platform for prophecies. Praise the Lord. I encourage us to all join God moment. It's every 6 a.m. First day of the month to the 14th day of the month. Meaning that God moment is going on right now. Meaning that you have to join God moment tomorrow morning. Praise the Lord. If you are excited, put your hands together to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Praise the Lord. Do enjoy the service and ensure that you activate something. Ensure that you activate something in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. If you're clapping for the King of all kings, you can do better. You can do better. If you're clapping for the El Shaddai, the I am, that I am, you can do better. If you're not clapping for the saints, more, you're clapping for Jesus, you can do better. Oh. Pastor Q says something about God moments. And in, in Eden Life, we have tremendous testimony back to back. So we're going to share one testimony because of our time. And I'm going to call Sister Success to come and share her testimony this morning. Please, you can help her. You can help her this morning. Good morning, church. Praise God. I want to thank God because God has been faithful to me. Um, I want to thank God for the life of my mom. Um, sometime earlier in the year, she was diagnosed of um, chronic kidney disease. And then that was the first testimony, really, because she has been falling heel back to back over the years. And coming into this year, while we're praying at... Um, the crossover service, one of the things I heard was that in this year, God will be revealing. And then when we were able to get a diagnosis, finally, after over 12 years of back-to-back -back illnesses, I was like, thank you, Jesus. It didn't make sense. Why will you be thanking God that your mother has chronic kidney disease? And I'm like, this is just the start. I want to thank God because prayers went on. I am thankful for the people that he kept around us. Pastor prayed. We all prayed together. When my mom's kidney was analyzed, it was at 15%, 15%, 
functionality and then she barely escaped dialysis. And then she could not be administered drugs because her kidney was already failing and couldn't process drugs. At this point, we're left with prayers. I want to thank God because today my mother is standing. The last checkup she had, her kidney was functioning at 85% functionality, zero drugs, just water and fruit. I don't know how it happened, but God is faithful. Praise Jesus. Praise God. If it were money we want to pay, we would do better. But this testimony is a mighty testimony. Can we just stand up and just thank the King of Kings for this wonderful testimony. For what he has done for us in Eden life. For this powerful testimony this morning. Let us be in the place of prayer this morning. Nikabanda nina mabundi ya boni na manda sudi kaya madana makande boni na manda sudi yado mabundi na manda nina makabanda kibando zubare yani banda yele boni na manda sudi ya mabundi kabanda nina mabanda yele boni na manda sudi. Thank you, Jesus. It's a good time to give God some quality praise this morning. Someone lift up your voice to God, the one who was, who he is, and who is to come. The Lord that we have come to see today, not even the church, not the pastors, but the creator of the heaven and the earth. If you are here to see Jesus, it's a good time to lift up your voice, giving him praise and giving him thanks, saying thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you, Jesus, for I'm here today. I'm here today to encounter the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus. Anybody who is here who has experienced the mercy and the favor of God, now is a good time to lift up your voice unto God. Scripture says that unto you who answers prayers shall all flesh return. Unto the Lord who answers prayers. Anybody a witness of answered prayer? You know that the Lord has been good. You know that the Lord has been kind. You know that the Lord has been gracious. You know that God has been faithful over you. Lift up your voice this morning. Ripobo shapalataba. Rebebebebeskete bladabala debo semenenta. Don't get tired of giving God praise. Lebrokoto bladabala tabladabo senema. Abayi katabaladaba. Let the heads praise him. Rebebebe bread of all cinema. For scripture says uh, that the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Give praise unto your maker, the maker of the heavens and the earth. Somebody give God some praise this morning. Now is a good time to open your mouth and speak. The Bible says the power of life and death it lies in the tongue. The power of life and death lies in the tongue. Somebody open your mouth and begin to proclaim life. As you are here today, the great that you encounter Jesus, you come in contact with the Lord Jesus. Oh, my Father in heaven, I decree and declare today, it is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will be glad. I decree and declare that on this day. Oh, I encounter the Lord Jesus. I encounter Jesus in my life. I encounter Jesus in my womb. I encounter Jesus in my business. I encounter Jesus over my family. We proclaim the name of Jesus. We proclaim the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We are going to read one scripture, just one scripture. Media, if you can help us, Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Oh, glory to Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And I read from verse 14. The Bible says, I know that whatever God does remains forever. Nothing can be added to it. Nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that men should see and fear before him. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. 
So there is a day you are going to pray here. Let something miraculous. Let it change in my life today, oh God. Let it be my shallow moment. Let me activate grace today. Oh, Balika Baskataba. Somebody lift your voice and begin to pray. Scripture says that whatever God does, nothing can be taken away. Nothing can be added to it. God does it and it remains forever. God gives the child. The child remains forever. God gives the increase. The increase remains forever. We know, we know, we know that whatever God does, it remains forever. Nothing can be added. Nothing can be taken. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Just one more prayer. We're going to pray. In Matthew chapter 13, scripture talk, talks about Jesus giving a parable about the sower. He said that they sowed seed on some, you know, different kinds of ground, but the seed was the same. Scripture now says that eventually, when the seed was sown upon the fertile ground, some produced 30 fold some produce 60 fold the same seed but the ground was the difference the ground is the state of your heart this morning the word of god is going to come but you are going to pray this morning now lord prepare my heart somebody if you have the prayer language just begin to pray in the holy ghost that your heart is prepared for the word of god you receive the word of god and it produces fruit in your heart you decree and declare the word of god is productive in your life the word of god in your life is active the word of god in your life Life, uh, it's not barren. Uh, the word of God in your life uh, is able to produce. Uh, Oh, I decree that upon my heart, let the word of God produce, let it produce a 30 fold, a 60 fold, a 100 fold. Rebelate Prakataba, Nananto Brodo Second, Rebelate Brada Balada Basha. I yield my body, I yield my spirit, I yield my mind. All of me, I yield unto you, O God. Rebelate Balada 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 Basha. I decree that I'm yielded. I'm yielded to the world. I'm yielded to the spirit. I do the will of the spirit. I yield to the leading of the spirit. Come on, everybody, just lift up your hands to Jesus. And continue praying in the Holy Ghost. Wherever you are, just go to the Holy Ghost. For you have come not to seek the face of a man, but to seek the one who has created you. Come on, don't get distracted by the person sitting close to you. Just open up your mouth and begin to pour out your spirit to the one to the maker. Come on, if you have a praying language. And in these days, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. I know you are here.
Give me all There's been a prayer in my life for the past few days. I was going to chant with that prayer because the Holy Ghost is here to fill your lamp. Give me oil in my lamp. May my light never be dim. Hey, keep me born and keep me born. Holy Ghost, till the coming of my Lord. Hey, give me oil in my lamp. May my light never be dim. It's a prayer. We're going to pray. Keep me born and keep me born. Shield of coming on my Give me more. 
My life never be deep. Keep me burning, keep me burning. Until the coming of my King. Not unto any man. Jesus, let your name alone be exalted. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost few seconds? Seba le kaiko pale masaile man brasko fela. Ene man tele pretos kapombene. Ai ke teves kapaman poli kai boros kapola. Shaba da bara de makai. Exo sebe le ke temanambo. Embriaco Cosca Palabas Sontes, Exapabamai, Ecatabaras Copalabai, Ayababa Baboya, Aikapalabata, Shabalabala Banamate, Shabalabara Banabana, Shabana Baracatanabo, Shabalabara Banabai, Shakatele Catela Barata, Embriaco Sabe, Ratas Copolo Coscata. Let your name below be exalted, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' matchless name, we have worshiped. In Jesus' matchless name, we have prayed. 
put those hands together for the Lord. And please have your seat majestically in God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. For obvious reasons, I'm the happiest person here today. For very obvious reasons. Amen. I want to appreciate everyone for making it to church this lovely Sunday morning. I'm excited. And it's good to see everyone. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to see everyone in the new venue. Praise God. Turn to your neighbor. Say something beautiful about them. Appreciate them. Tell them you're welcome to church. Let them know that their expectations will never be cut short. Never, never. Today marks the beginning of another beginning. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We didn't call this conference Activate Grace just for the fun of it. There is something, something's about to be activated in your life. That your generation will live forever to thank you. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Welcome once again. And please, uh, if today happens to be your first time worshiping with us, I want to sincerely say a big thank you. I'm privileged to pastor this global church. It's a privilege to pastor this global ministry. Hallelujah. I welcome you to Eden Life where we encounter Christ and we equip lives for we equip lives. We equip lives for exploit. Hallelujah. So you're welcome. We have three E's encounter, equipping, and exploit. There is something I can guarantee you that if you worship with us in this ministry, your life will be the talk of the town. I'm telling you, I'm telling you. We've had it, we've had it. Just a couple of weeks down the line, we started as a small group, amen, and see what the Lord has done for us today. Amen. And after today, oh Lord, Kadala Baha'i. You know, I took, I took time to watch a viral video of Papa speaking to someone, and um, Papa said, you know, pray three months every night. I, I took time. I watched it over and over again. As though the instruction was for me. Because I know the instruction is coming for me. I'm telling you. And the instruction is coming for you. I took time to watch it. I said, my God. You know what? I was, I was asking God, what's the name of this conference? What's the name? Papa is coming. What's the name? God didn't say anything. So I wanted to give it a name. The Lord said, I know you. Very sharp guy. <laughs> then the Lord said, now it is the time to activate it. Then the Lord took me back to 13 years ago. So for some people that have been looking forward to hearing story, story time. 13 years ago, so my relationship is not a one-year relationship, it's not a two-year relationship. 13 years relationship. Am I even right? 13 years, 2024. Yeah, 2011, 20. I went to pick Papa at Ijebode Roundabout. It was on brown trouser, brown bag. Ijebode Roundabout. I was in another person about university. Then immediately he saw me, he said, I don't like driving. That was why, you know, whenever he says that when he's in Lagos, God told him not to buy a car. I believe it. Because that was the first thing. He said, I don't like driving so that you people will think that one big pastor has come. He said, carry my bag. Then I put him from Ijebode. We went to Ijebumushin. Very inside the bush. We lodged him in, in, in a, like a mini estate, a chalet. And Papa was with us for four nights. Four nights. I've never seen that before four nights. And by the time he was done with us, the fifth day, he said he had not started. <laughs> then he gave me a CD, 300 messages. In those days, we were still using CD. 300 messages in CD. 13 years ago. Then a year after, I was pastoring the joint body believer on Olabi Sarambad University, you know, and we had a convention for all the joint body believers and we brought him for the convention. And he prophesied a word and he mentioned the particular day. He said, after this particular year, something will happen. I mean, some of the people that graduated me from campus, you know, every time they see me, they remind me of that particular, and I know the year that he fell into. So we are sons of prophecy. I'm telling you. So it's a 13-year journey coming. It's not a one-year journey. It's a 13 full year coming. Hallelujah. And at every point in time that, you know, um, 
certain major landmark wants to happen in our lives, in, in our ministry, uh, God uses power to birth, you know, that, you know, that season. And that is why I believe that this is not, we didn't plan it, we are planning for February. So how God planned it for April, I didn't know. We planned this meeting for February, but this is the exact time. I'm telling you, this is exact. So this is not about, you know, bringing Papa because, no, this is because God said so. God organized it. I want you to be here with your entire life. Did you get what I'm saying? Be here with your entire life. If anybody is calling you from village, lock down your phone. It's not village time. Praise God. Hallelujah. Once again, I welcome you. I would not, I will not preach today. It will be, it will be unfair for me to preach because my destiny does not desire to preach. Amen. Every Sunday I pray over the night waiting to teach the word. This one, I'm not teaching anything. I came with my notes full. So it is a great joy to have a father in the faith. A, a, a man with exact, precise, authentic word. One that I respect a general to us that are coming up in this thing. Please with a standing ovation with all of the might, the God, the honor that you have, make me welcome Apostle Papa Aroven Osai. Hallelujah. So, Lord, we give you great thanks and praise. We magnify you this morning and we ask, O oh God, that in our midst that you might stretch forth your hand and reach out to every single person that has come to seek your face. Minister assurance into our spirits. Grant us grace for the journey ahead. Grant us measures of the anointing to confront the obstacles that we might encounter and by all means galvanize your people for engagement and for destiny in the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Please you may be seated. So we are looking at activations. Activations. I'll be here for 30 minutes. I'll just speak for 30 minutes. And then we'll trust God for the activations. In the name of Jesus. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, verse number 6. To eight, Acts of the Apostles, chapter one, verse number six to eight. When they were therefore come together, they asked him, saying, "Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel?" And he said unto them, "It is not for you to know the times or the seasons." which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Hallelujah. They say, Will thou at this time 
restore again the kingdom to Israel? These were, these were very strong questions that these guys were asking. Because at the time that the questions were asked, Israel was not a self-governing nation. They were operating under the political weight of the Roman Empire. It was a situation that did not afford them the opportunity for actualization. It was a situation that did not afford them the opportunity to maximize potential. It was a situation that kept them measured, confined, and suppressed. And if you ask every son of Israel, the question that was the million dollar question of that time was, when will we become a self-governing nation? And Jesus was educating his functionaries about what it would take to ex extend the frontiers of the kingdom of God. And somebody now asked the question, because the subject of Jesus' delivery, okay, let me show you, let me show you. Come with me to verse 3. In verse 3, the Bible says, To whom he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So the subject of Jesus' education were things that pertain to the kingdom of God. That was the emphasis. <laughs> and then during the delivery, someone now raises his hand. And when the person was given the floor, the person began to ask about Israel as a nation. Not necessarily the kingdom of God. The emphasis was the kingdom of God. But they smuggled that political question because it was a burning question on the heart of every Israelite at the time. I was expecting Jesus to say wrong question. I was expecting him to say, that's, that's a proof that you have not been following my teaching. I was expecting him to discipline the person that brought this question because the person was not attentive to the emphasis that he was bringing. But instead of rebuking the person, instead of exposing the question and defining it to be wrong. Jesus said, it is not for you to know the times or seasons. You see, in the Greek word, in the Greek language, there are two words for time. One is chronos time, and it is from chronos that we have chronological. The other is Kairos time. And what Kairos time means is a time that is opportune. If you plant maize, for instance, uh, it takes about three months to ripen. In the period of these three months, you'll be harvesting. You'll be applying fertilizer. You'll be praying for rain to fall on the farm. But you can only harvest when it is exactly three months. Are you there? Now, so the Greek calculates the time where you planted the corn. Throughout the period of the three months is chronos. But the two weeks that you'll be harvesting from that farm, that's the kairos time. It's the opportune time. And if you study your Bible, any time scripture recommends that we need to redeem the time because the days are evil check the word for time there it is kairos because satan can allow you plant he can allow you fertilize he can allow you weed but he will not allow you harvest it is during the chronos the chronos time satan you won't see him but when it's time for you to receive a return on your investment that's when Satan will begin to strike at the heart of your destiny. Now, so Jesus says, are you with me? He uses the two Greek words for time in response to a question that was outside of context. 
is not for you to know the times, the chronos and the kairos which God has set in his own authority. Who knows the meaning of what I just read now? So, because I just read it to you from the original script. It is not for you to know the chronos. It's not for you to know the kairos that God has set in his own authority. What's the meaning of that? It means that just like your attempt to cultivate maize and the process of getting a harvest of maize takes you through the chrono stage, brings you into the chiro stage and then you become you become responsible for taking advantage of the chiro season that's how the purposes of God upon the face of the earth must go through that same prescribed cycle And that prescribed cycle is not under your authority. It's under his authority. Every kingdom man will be tested. Will be tested on the, on the ground of the timings of God. Because the Kronos and the Kairos are set under the authority of God. For instance, a pastor can be sent to Abelkuta, another pastor is sent to Aja, another pastor is sent to, to Ijabode. And the pastor that is sent to Aja, after one month of intensive prayers, he was able to gather a congregation of 250 people. The pastor that was sent to Abelkuta, he had to labor for two years and four months in order for him to get the same number that the guy in Naja got in two weeks. There is a tendency for the guy in Abelkota to think that the guy in Naja is performing much better than he's doing if he does not understand that for everything that God has ordained, there is a prescribed chronos and a kairos season so the purposes of God are not implemented just because someone is passionate the purposes of God are not Im implemented just because someone is prayerful the purposes of God are not implemented just because somebody thinks it is a time for the thing to happen the first thing Jesus begins to speak about kingdom realities kingdom possibilities is the issue of timing that is held under the authority of the father have you read the scripture that said Paul planted Apollos water but it was God that determined when the increase will come so your planting is a planting of faith in expectation of that time that God will occasion the increase to find expression. So, so we have something here. He says it's not for you to know. And a man that has not gone through the processes of God's timing, eh? if you have never gone through a situation that you could do nothing to promote yourself until the time that God ordained for your promotion broke out. If you have never been through that circumstance, you have never been through that situation. It means you don't understand the way, you have never experienced God's protocol of establishing things upon the face of the earth. You don't know how to believe when the ability to make the thing you are believing come to pass is not in your hand. You, you don't know what it means, therefore, to wait on the Lord in order for him to make good his promises in his own due time. 
the, the benefits of having your soul tampered by patience because you are not the one that has the power to produce the results that you are seeking. Uh, if you have not experienced that before, you will not even be patient with people when they are growing in the law. You know, every human being wants to be in charge of his destiny. And if by any means you are subscribing to a protocol that you cannot influence how results come, and you need to wait on the authority of God that is held in administering the chronos and the kairos. If you have never experienced that, then you don't know how the purposes of God get established upon the face of the earth. We are not that powerful. But you see, as, as almost powerless as we are, you still need to bring your own commitment to the table consistently. Uh, so that when God wants to tip the scales, he will take advantage of that your routine of faithfulness that you have set in motion. He will take advantage of it as an excuse to bring to pass the things that he has promised you. The reason why you keep going, the reason why you are consistent, the reason why you believe is because you know that God spoke. So even though you have not seen the results, and you can't create the results. You are faithful in serving him the way he has requested, waiting for the Kairos moment that is set under his own authority. When you begin to do kingdom labors, you begin to understand that, yes, you are a powerful person, you are a prayerful person, but as powerful as you are, you don't understand the dynamics of how prayers are answered. You know how to pray. You don't know how to answer prayer. You know how to believe God and to walk by faith. But you cannot make your faith produce. You know that God has spoken this to you, but you don't know when it will happen. Have you been there before? You don't know when it will happen. You only know that this is what God has said I should do. And because he said I should do this, I will be about my business doing what God has said I should do so that he can open the door of the chaos. I was in the wilderness of a remote city in Benway State. And while we were on campus, the Lord had spoken and he had said that a mighty move of the Spirit of God was going to pass through the corridor of that terrain. And these were the prophecies. We had a prayer group on, on campus. And there was this lady that was gifted with the gift of prophecy. She could prophesy for hours. Once the unction comes upon her, she begins to download. And in her deliverables, she will reveal secrets that you know that there is no way this lady would have spoken about this thing if God did not speak to her. Sometimes it's so intense that she falls on the ground and she begins to prophesy. So one of the major highlights of the prophetic utterances that she gave was that there was going to be a move of God that would be pioneered by young people in the days to come. That is what is going to shape Christianity in the territory and give the kingdom of God an opportunity for dominance and for dominion because that territory was sold out to witchcraft it was deep in necromancy the diabolical dimensions of the kingdom of darkness were prevalent in the territory and it was a territory that when a minister of the gospel begins to come into lamplight, the moment his glory begins to shine he is cut off and we have had episodes of promising, powerful, very powerful ministers of the gospel cut off mysteriously. And when one giant like that is cut off, it will take some, it will take a decade and a few years for another reset to take place and then a new set of functionaries rise. During the waiting period of 15 years, I, oh, you are not with me. 
Are you there? <laughs> During that waiting period of another 15 years, for, for God to reconstitute his team and to install someone as a striker, before that arrangement comes to pass, the darkness that we hit the territory will be grievous because any if you have ever seen a place where God moved before and the move was not sustained, expect some of the most brutal dimensions of darkness. That's why we formed the slogan those days on campus, inconsistency lies the power. I will never forget that. Because we saw the darkness that hit the ground when that minister of the gospel was caught up. And like these guys, we asked the question, will you at this time restore the kingdom? Will you at this time open the floodgates? Will you at this time do something that will give us hope that you are going to come? The darkness was thick. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know... One of the things I have little grace for is intercession. I have little grace in that area. Little enough for me to be able to discern the darkness in places and in people. That's how little the intercessory grace on my life is. I can know, I can know if darkness is on your head. When we start praying, I might know because of that little grace. Um, there were bouts, waves, winds of darkness that used to flow over our campus those days. And when that wind comes, about 10 to 11 students will just die. Then, people will become sober. Some people that left church long ago will now start coming to church and confessing their sins. Then after a while, they will migrate again and then that darkness begins to form. It will blow over the campus again. Twelve people will die. Some in the hostel. Some here. Some will just fall sick. They rush them to the hospital. They die. And it was a cycle that continued again and again and again such that we had to ask, will you at this time? People no longer believe the gospel at some point because of the deaths. Especially when one, a one-time JCCA president, is that what you call it? JCCA president now died. So the unbelievers now said, if it is true that it's God we have been talking to, this would have been avoided. We die, you people died. So how are we different? Why should we? We passionately prayed for God to move because the questions were too many. But God did not move. Because the Kronos and the Kairos are set under his own authority. Have you been in a situation before you, you expected something to happen? You expected God to just show up, things were bad, and God didn't show up. And then Satan then comes and says, I don't understand this your life for. With all the impute you have put into the kingdom of God, now that you are in this situation, and see the way you cried, and there was no answer. He says, it's not for you to know. The times or the seasons, huh? that is in my authority. I will not show up because you are crying. I will not show up because you believe that the situation is bad. The times and the seasons, the chronos and the kairos, they are held under my authority. The first thing that you need to understand as a kingdom functionary 
is that there is something God called God's authority. What is held under God's authority, your prayer cannot influence it. I hope you know the will of God is superior to your prayer. Yes, oh, you are not here. Yes, I'm trying to tell you the things I learned in my work with God. I felt that when that guy died, are you there? Yes, I don't know if I should tell you the full story. No, I'm asking God, you know. You know. That guy died once. Oh. He died once. He died on my floor. My room, I don't know the room number again. My room was in the middle. So he died on the pavement. The walkway of that floor. So they brought him to my room. I see one of your owner people look. That was where we locked the door. And we prayed for him until he rose from the dead. You know, that's why I was wondering whether to say this or not. Please, I apologize for saying it. If what you saw in my testifying means, means that I'm a champion, I apologize. Sorry about that. So we prayed for him that time. He rose from the dead. Two years later, he died. Then we had graduated. Two years later, he died again. And this time, he died. And they prayed. And he did not come back. So the unbelievers began to slight us. So what is the difference between your own faith and we that don't believe in your God? That would have been a moment for God to release power on his functionaries so that we'll be able to recover people, we'll be able to do supernatural works. God did not show up because it was not time according to his calendar. The first thing you need to know about the move of God, there is a timing to it. The first thing you need to know about your breakthrough, there is a timing to it that is held up in God's calendar. And God is not under any obligation to let you know about the status of that calendar. The way I'm seeing you, the way I'm seeing your face, it's as if you are saying, this man came to break our heart. <laughs> there is a calendar. If you are going to be a kingdom man that will bet the purposes of God, you must understand that the Kronos and the Kairos are held in God's own authority. In that my village, that my location that I'm calling my village, do you know how long we prayed before this number you have here today gathered? Do you know how long? Seven years. Seven years before this number gathered. How old are you as, as a ministry? Eden, Eden, yeah? Five months. Yes. So, the number you gathered today in five months, it took us seven years to gather it. These seven years were not wasteful years. They were years of very strange intercession. They were years of strange fasting. There were years of strange prayers and prophetic action in the city. But it took us seven years. So the question is, why is it that it took us seven years and it's taking someone else five months? It's not for you to know. The times or the seasons held up in God's authority. Are you there? I have a calendar and I'm not under obligation to reveal the status of that calendar to you. 
So when you journey with God, you journey with him trusting in his fidelity, not plotting a time graph. You journey with God trusting that God is not a man that he should lie, neither is he the son of man that he should repent. You journey with God knowing that these thoughts he has concerning you are thoughts of good always and not of evil. But the moment you begin to relate with him on the basis of time means that you have generated by yourself, you set yourself up and give Satan an occasion to afflict you with his mind-bending tricks. Are you there? So we waited. There were, there were cycles of discouragement that came. Then when we go back, that's why you need to document your encounters. Because there will be moments where the moon will not shine. You will need to go back and say, what did God really say? Because based on your expectation, at this time, something should have happened. It took us seven years to arrive where you are. Are you there? I went to the son of the preacher I spoke about that shook my city. But it did not, it did not last for long in that, in that, that place of honor that God brought him. So I asked him, how, how long does your dad pray? He told me, what of, how long does he study the Bible? He told me. What are the other things he does? He told me. I looked at it. I said, how long did he do this thing before he had this city-wide impact? He said, seven years. How old was I then? I was... 27 27 years I said I have 7 years now I did more than what the young man told me that is if the prayer is 2 hours I add are you there <laughs> if the bible study is this number of hours I added my own because I was young I wanted to see results. You know what happened? After seven years, instead of us to have citywide breakthrough, it was Satan that appeared. I had one of the most grievous betrayers in my life. After seven years of consistent praying and fasting seven years of teaching scriptures it was the most horrific betrayal of my destiny that visited me at the time are you there that was where this scripture now made sense to me that when you are dealing with God do not generate your human time frame because the chronos and the kairos are set under his authority. It was in the place of prayer while I was crying to God after that betrayal took place. Why? That God now said, who set the time frame? Then I realized it was not an insight I got from God, but it was a permutation that I came about because of the interview I had with the man's son. The first thing you must know when dealing with God, you must understand the place of his authority. Your prayer cannot change it. It is, it is set in his calendar. Are you there? That's number one. Before we talk about activations, let me tell you about the framework, the architecture of God and his dealings. And if you understand some of these things, 
it will be easy for you to walk with God. So I found out experientially that God and his authority ah, are things that you will encounter inevitably on your journey towards accomplishing the objective that God has put upon your heart. You will collide with the issue of authority. Then you will now realize that the authority of God, you will now realize that the will of God is superior to your effort and to your prayer. It was set in motion in eternity past before the foundations of the world. And the best you can do is align with it, not confront it. You align. So I now started learning the hard lessons of aligning with God's will and also submitting to his timing. That was the first kingdom, practical kingdom lesson that I learned in the field of ministry. Are you there? So I came to tell you, submit to his timing. Submit to his timing. Don't come and run a sprint with God because God will take you to the root of a marathon. You are looking for a breakthrough. God wants to build you up so that your confidence will be rooted and grounded in him. God is concerned about the process, but you are concerned about the results. And God, even though he's in a hurry to bring revival, he's not in a hurry with you. Mm, he's not in a hurry with you. He has time for you to go through the process that he has put in place. Because one of the things that he will use to test you and try you is the time that is under his authority. So please help me ask your neighbor, are you, are you like milk or you are like wine? Because milk gets bad with time. Wine gets better with time. If you don't have stamina to survive the test of time, it means you don't have the capacity to be able to bet things that God has set in motion before the foundation of all things began. Ask your neighbor again, are you like milk? Or you are like wine? So that which God has put under his authority is what we discover and yield to. Are you there? However, we are not totally impotent. Because the next verse says, ye shall receive power. Now, even though it is not for you to know the times or the seasons that God has set in his own authority, that's beyond your pay grade. That's in God's realm. That's in God's decision. But you have your own portion. You have your own scope and sphere of ability that is due you in the process of realizing God's territorial kingdom dream. He says, I'm going to make an allocation of power available for you. Because in the eyes of Jesus, you don't just need power for crusades. In the eyes of Jesus, it is not only to cast out devils that you need power. In the eyes of Jesus, you need power for daily life. In fact, Jesus said that signs follow people that believe in him. Indicative of the fact that you will need the supernatural to prosecute natural life. In the eyes of Jesus, this natural life is supernatural. You will need spiritual capital to keep afloat in the journey of life. That one is your portion. So I'm going to make that a location available to you. The timings and the seasons of your life, they belong to me. But what belongs to you 
is the power that you need to wade through life so that you are not a victim of the forces and the elements of this world but you have you are a minion that has been empowered by the spiritual deposits of 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 of, of grace so that you can achieve you can confront opposition you can you can go past the tempest and the storm and establish the will of God so there are two things we have just touched now the first is not is not in your court in God's court so you cannot say that after three weeks this is where we will be just like Satan cannot say I will kill you by 9 p.m. because it's not given to him time and season chronos and karyos is not in Satan's authority in whose authority is it in God's authority as as much as Satan hates you he cannot say I will kill you by 12 o'clock because it's not given unto you are you there as much as you want to break through are you there you will need to submit to God's chronos God's process and God's seasons of harvest where you have opportunity to realize the things that you desire and God will make that available to you in his own due time and the calendar of God for actualization for every man is different so if you begin to look at pastor and say in five weeks this was where he arrived at and you use that same measurement as the measurement for your own life you are going to be wrong because the scale of God's dealings for him is very, very different from the scale of God's dealings for you. Is that clear? So your work with God, therefore, is personal. Your timings are personal. Your dealings are personal. And they are consistent with your calling and your unique purpose in God. That's the first matter. The second matter is that there's an allocation of power that God makes available so that beyond your human capacity, hey, my God, he said the Lord is coming. The Lord is coming. He has spoken to me three times on a certain matter. On a certain matter. Well, let me keep quiet and see. If he speaks again, then I will start prophesying. You see, because you said I prophesied, so today I made up my mind I won't prophesy. But he has spoken three times on one matter. <laughs> he has spoken three times on one matter. That means I'm, I'm going to tell you. But whether I will tell you while I'm preaching or not, if he speaks again, it means I, I'm supposed to tell you here. If he doesn't speak again, I will tell you in the office. But ye shall receive power. There's an allocation of power that you are supposed to receive. When you receive that allocation of power, the implication is that you have capacity to govern territory. You see, nobody became a king in Israel to govern Jerusalem without an anointing. So anytime you see an anointing, there's a territory that you are supposed to exercise governance over that is allocated to you. While we were praying during the prayer time, we were speaking in the Holy Spirit. The reason why you could speak in the Holy Spirit was because there was an anointing that God committed to you that will become the measure of spiritual energy that will drive your life. That anointing that is upon your life presupposes that there is a territory that you were 
ordained by God to govern is a token of the do dominion mandate. That there's a territory already allocated to you and the territory existed before you were anointed. It's not as if you were anointed and then they'll be making the territory available. No king was truly anointed without a territory already available for him to exercise his authority. When Jesus was trying to reveal Satan, the designation he gave Satan was prince. The prince of this world, comet. So who is a prince? I know someone in the congregation will say he's the son of a king. That's not accurate in kingdom technology. A prince is a king without territory. He has authority, but there's no territory allocated to him. <laughs> there's no territory allocated to him to exercise his authority. That's why the Bible says, give Satan no place, because it's the place you give him that he will rule over. The authority is already there. But until you acknowledge that authority and submit that, that your territory to him, he will have no place to exercise the authority he has gathered. And so Jesus said, you shall receive power. And this power is supposed to be the result of the presence of the Holy Ghost upon your life. The way I've seen it during the prayer session, it is obvious that we all, almost all of us here have received the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues. But the problem is that there is no power in our lives. Jesus did not say you will receive speaking in tongues after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. What did he say? So there are many things we want to activate today. So we'll now start the first item of activation is the activation of power. Now, Jesus is aware that you need power, not just for crusades, but you need power for daily life. You are not about to make any impact in life without power. And God has labored to give you your own allocation, your own measure of the Holy Ghost, which is the spiritual capital that produces power. But unfortunately, the average believer only has the evidence that they have received the Holy Ghost. But the power that is supposed to be the result of the presence of the Holy Ghost in that form is not manifest. So, we have a shortfall in terms of performance. And that's why we need to activate. Is that clear? So, let us talk about activating power. We bought a huge land. And we began to build. Because the place was a swamp, I insisted that we should begin the building in rainy season so that we would lay a foundation in view of how terrible the swamp can be. And while the engineers were, you see, the place, eh? it's a serious swamp. They were laboring. They were adequately mobilized for the project. I came to site one of those days and work has stopped. Ah. What's going on here? The workers did not talk to me. It was the leader of the workers that now came to speak to me. That there's a problem. 
I asked, are you guys being paid? They said, money they come. Let they pay us. Do you have adequate water supply? What are they? Are there sufficient materials on site? It was not a problem of materials. So what's the problem? He took me aside. And he said to me that there is a huge python that has been visiting them during this building. If you have been to where our facility is, it is beside the international market. And based on the tradition of the people in that locality, there are several rituals that are done before markets are established. You can't just wake up and say, let's start a market um, at my backyard. May the Lord give you understanding in the name of Jesus. <laughs> I know you like selling things, you like business, but, but where I'm coming from, you can't just wake up and say, okay, let's start a market. In order for you to start a market there, there is an elaborate procedure that you need to go through before a market is set up. If you don't follow that elaborate procedure, this entity will visit you. So, they say that snake started visiting them on the side. And because they know the culture, they understand that it's spiritual. It's not just, the snake is physical. I'm not saying it's, it's physical. The workers can kill it. But they know better not to attempt that because they understand from culture that it was a serpent that was appeased before the market was built. Now the serpent lives on our own property. So the guy now told me that they are ready to walk, but I should come and remove the serpent. Now, now, maybe, maybe along the line, all you are is a graduate of a theological college and you were mobilized to start ministry. You were not told that in the process you will need to confront a serpent. Jesus is aware of how his purposes are established upon the face of the earth. And he knows that you are not going to make any headway if you don't have an allocation of power. So before we requested for power, Jesus said, what? Ye, ah, you understand this matter. It's not as if you went out and then you saw that, ah, there's need to, let me come and request, apply for power. Before the job even starts, he said, you know what? Take, I have a location <laughs> for you. It is expected that the measure of the Holy Spirit that you receive will become the foundation for the generation of that power. But the average believer has decided to live short of the provisions that Jesus made available. And, and, and that is what is customary. That's what we are used to. We are expecting the best, but we are not willing to fully maximize the capacity that Jesus has allocated to us. Come with me quickly. I need to show you something. Are you there? Okay. Notice in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, there are two things he speaks about. There are two things that go hand in hand. There are two things that we cannot separate from each other. And that is spirit and power. You will receive spirit first and then the spirit will produce power. Come with me to the book of Luke chapter 1.
Luke chapter 1, are you there? All right. Can we begin to read from verse number 5? Read from verse 5. We'll read through to like 17. There was in the days of, of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the course of Abia, and his wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. And they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blameless. And they had no child because that Elizabeth was barren. And their both were now well stricken in years. And it came to pass while he executed the priest's office before God in the order of his course, according to the custom of the priest's office. His Lord was to burn the incense when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people were praying without at the time of incense. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fear fell upon him. And the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John, and thou shalt have joy and gladness and many shall rejoice at his bed uh, for he shall be great in the sight of the lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink but he shall be filled with the holy ghost even from his mother's womb and many of the children of israel shall he turn to the lord their god verse 17 is my emphasis and he shall go before him in the spirit and power of what of Elias now you know I'm trying to show you something there's a combination the spirit power combination are you with me he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah the prophet God said you will receive power but that power that you receive will be the result of receiving so there are two things spirit and power okay because there are two things we need to conduct a query we'll conduct a query the first query that we're going to conduct we're going to query power when we finish querying power, we will now query spirit. When I finish these two, you will know where you are in the map. In the map of destiny. It is after that that you will see the need for us to activate. And thank God I have a little time. When we are done with the, the theory aspect, we will now go to the practical aspect. Because the kingdom of God is not in war. Words are weak to illustrate kingdom things. Are you there? So let us query power. John the Baptist was supposed to go in the spirit and power of Elias. Somebody help me with John chapter 4. John chapter 10. Quickly. John 10. John 10, verse 40 and 41. And went away again beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized. And he abode there. He's talking about Jesus. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracle, but all things that John spake about this man were true. Are you there? Jesus went to retreat around Jordan, where John used to baptize. And many people 
resorted to him. Many people came to him. And when they came to him, they brought a report of John's ministry. And they said, John, he did no miracle. That's the first report. But the things that John said about this man, they were true. That means John operated in the spirit. He was inspired by the spirit. John spoke about Jesus through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. And the people came to confirm that the things that John said were actually inspired of God because they were true. But the problem with John's ministry was that John did no miracle. It means John received the spirit and based on the inspiration that they confirmed it was the genuine Holy Spirit. But the problem with John's ministry was that there was a shortfall because John did not operate in power. Even though the prophetic word that captured his destiny revealed that he was supposed to operate in the spirit and in the power of prophet Elijah, but there was a shortfall in his ministry, no power ever manifested. Many believers in our time have decided to, to summarize their lives within the scope of this first shortfall. Where the Spirit of God in them is valid, and you could see the inspiration with which they pray in tongues. The Spirit of God in them is valid. You could see the energy that is generated when they bask in the Holy Ghost. But there was another island of spiritual possibility that they did not explore. Our generation is coming to that point where we are accepting a life without power. For John did no That's the first query. Should I tell you something? I hope you know there were two of Jesus' disciples that came from the village called Bethsaida. And in the book of Matthew chapter 23, you will find Jesus placing curses on some cities. The second city Jesus placed a curse on was Bethsaida. Imagine that Jesus be begins to curse cities and then the name of your city was mentioned. And there were two of his disciples that came from that location. Can you imagine the kind of emotion that will be stirred in the camp? Quiet emotion. And the reason for which Jesus placed a curse on those cities was that if the signs and wonders that were done in those cities were done in Sodom and Gomorrah, they would have repented in sackcloth and ashes. Indicative of the fact that the witness of the gospel of the kingdom that came to Sodom and Gomorrah was an insufficient witness. It was lacking in power. And the, as sinful as you saw that the men of Sodom and Gomorrah were, there was actually hope for them to turn to the Lord if the witness that came to them came with the dimension of power. So anytime we accept a civilization that is at home with a shortfall of possibility, at home with a powerless state of existence, what we are accepting is that our witness on earth will be insufficient. Think about it. The way we are going to do this work is by power. Let that be your prayer every night. I'm not going to be a talkative. I will not be one of those that will be trying to explain scriptures all the days of my life. When, when, when Pharaoh asked Moses, who is the Lord that I should obey him? He was not requiring a theological exposition. <laughs> he, 
he was not looking for a Bible school graduate to do ex exegesis. Who is the law that I should obey him? It means if you know him enough, show us him by his mighty works. That day, Moses did not preach a sermon. Our generation is asking us the same question, who is the law that we should yield to him? Who is the law that we should serve him? Who is the law that we should bow before him? And if by any means we lack the power dimension of the economy of grace that we carry, we will become irrelevant in that day. That's the first query. Second query is spirit. Come with me to the book of Luke chapter 9. Luke 9. Luke chapter 9. We'll read from verse number 51. If you are still with me, say, Amen. Amen. And it came to pass when the time was come that he should be received up. He steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face and they went and entered into a village of the Sam Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw this, they said, Lord, will thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them as Elias did? And he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. The query in this second reading is a query of spirit. Hallelujah. The first query was the second query here is spirit. So Jesus began to pick the frequency that the time was come for him to go and offer himself in Jerusalem. It was becoming strong on his heart. Even though he had sent people before his face to go to Samaria because Samaria became one of his retreat zones. He had like two retreat zones. One of them was Bethsaida. Uh, no, no, no. What's, what's that name? The home of Lazarus. Bethany. Bethany. Bethany was one of his resort places, and the land of the Samaritans was another resort place. And I could imagine that there were delicacies among the Samaritans that Jesus had liked. So he had a place. They knew what he wanted. So when the news got to them that he was going to spend some time, they had prepared some of his delicacies and these meals were available. And then when they went to meet him at the border, it was as if he had a change of heart. And they said, but we prepared your favorite soup. That was not enough to convince him about changing his direction. We had labored all night to make preparation. His journey was still strong on his heart. So then I said, we don't even want to receive you again. So the moment that happened, James and John now told Jesus that you've been teaching us how to call fire from heaven. Now, if you hear the way these guys are talking, you will know that they, have, they, they, they used to call fire during their practice. They used to call fire from heaven. So they were wondering when they will use that authority. They now told Jesus, is this not an appropriate situation? For us to what? Invoke fire from. So these guys, there was no question about the power and the authority of their lives. 
But the Bible says, Jesus turned. That means Jesus first spoke to them with his face. If you start growing in intimacy with your wife, not every time she will talk. Sometimes she just open her eyes. Especially when there are visitors there. And she's beginning to sense that one of the people that came, you are not supposed to relate to this person. And she comes and opens the eye. Like this. If you have been with her for a while, you will just understand that it's time to dismiss that fellowship. <laughs> Jesus spoke first with his face. For the Bible says he turned. They saw his displeasure on his face before he now told them that it is obvious that you guys don't know what spirit ye are of. The query was, what spirit? Oh, you are not following me. Now, now, now. Because you are not following, we cut one side of this syllabus. Okay, we have 55 minutes. So, we're supposed to go to Luke chapter 14. So, but we'll cut that one out. Because you are not. Jesus rebuked them. He says, You do not know what spirit ye are of. I have a gift, for instance, the gift of word of knowledge. If I am, if I really, 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 really want to know how much you have in that your bag, when we start praying, I'll just ask God, How much do you say? How much? How much? How much? I will be asking it like 12 times. The thing will open. Then I can tell you how much you have. After telling you how much you have, and you did not tell me the amount, and I tell you this is how much it is. If I now tell you that the Lord has need of that money, you will submit it. Because you didn't tell me how much you have. But you see, what I have done is that I have used that gift to steal from you because I do not know what spirit I have the spirit that I have does not sanction stealing so in my administration of the gift I've used it to accomplish something that is not in the nature of that spirit that is a proof that I don't know what spirit I'm carrying now, a lot of people under the anointing have done so many things. May you not do things just for the purpose of getting results. No. I will not, I will not do it. There are many things that can be done to get results, but the goal is not results. The goal is that your relationship with God is held intact and God can trust you with higher measures of power, higher measures of authority because he did not abuse their location that he gave you in the first instance. You know not what spirit ye are of. Hallelujah. In my work with God, I have stood before presidents of nations to tell them what God is saying. But you see, I did not start there. Huh? God, the little one God gave me, I, administ I administered it as he wanted. He increased it. Because he, he trusts me. So he gives me another measure. That other measure can produce more drastic results than the previous measure. And once you administer it accurately, he'll give you what? yet another measure. So the key to growth in authority, the key to growth in power is that you are conscious of the nature of the spirit you carry and you don't violate his nature. That means that you are eager to represent him accurately. And when that becomes your disposition, you have access 
to higher dimensions of the grace of God. Now let me show you how to activate power. How to move from the anointing of the Holy Spirit to the power of the Holy Spirit. Are you there? Okay, come with me quickly. Let me show you an example of what I mean. In the book of Acts chapter 6. Are you there in Acts chapter 6? Okay. And in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplied, there arose a murmuring of the Grecians against the Hebrews because their widows were neglected in the daily ministration. Then the twelve called the multitude of the disciples unto him and said, It is not reason that we should leave the word of God and serve tables. Wherefore, brethren, look ye out among you seven men of honest report and full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And this same pleased the whole multitude. And they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. So, the test case I want to take now is Stephen. What's the description for Stephen? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. A man full of faith and what? Holy. So he was full of faith. He was full of the Holy Ghost. That was his description. That was his curriculum vitae. Now, come with me. Acts chapter 6 verse 8. After a period of time, Stephen's CV was revealed. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So initially, Stephen's description was that he was full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Then after a while, Stephen's description now became a man full of faith and power. So the anointing of the Holy Ghost on his life are transformed to become power. But you, you received the Holy Ghost and what you received was the ability to speak in tongues. And the anointing of the Holy Ghost on your life has not yet. How many years have you been speaking in tongues? It has not yet transformed to power. And if you continue like this, your life is going to produce insufficient witness. Does it not bother you how that we have many, many Christians around, but the issue of being able to evangelize our nation is something that seems to have no logical conclusion. It's because the average believer has accepted a position of insufficient witness. Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Stephen, a man full of faith and power. So he converted his own anointing. He converted it to power. Okay. Last scripture. Where we see Luke chapter Luke chapter 4 Turn to Luke chapter 4 quickly Let us just Can we look at Luke chapter 4 verse 1 quickly? And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Uh, he 
it was full of what? Oh, this the, the congregation has abandoned me. It was full of what? Now he left River Jordan. River Jordan was where he was baptized in water and baptized in the Holy Ghost. So he was full of the Holy Ghost. And then he was led by the Spirit to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Holy Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region round about. So what will... Posters are good. Though. Posters are good. Handbills are good. Flyers on Facebook or Instagram, powerful. But what will make the fame of what is happening here travel? So let me show you three steps for conversion because we are we are into activation of grace today. Notice the Bible says that and Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. Are you with me? Jesus arrived the ground of testing before the tester. He came for the examination before the examiner. You know, many of you, the moment you got married, you went to South Africa for honeymoon. You did not know that the tester was coming. The tester arrived the testing grounds before you showed up. And threw the marriage into confusion. You have diligently sought ways to restore normalcy. But your case has been a case of perpetual battles. And the omission on your part was that you allowed the tester to arrive the testing grounds before you showed up. So before we got married, we, we were in fasting. Fourteen days after our marriage, our wedding, sorry, was my ordination. As I was dressing up for ordination, I went into the bathroom to take my bath. Then a coffin appeared in the room. Only my wife could see it. She was lying on the bed and then another version of her sat up from within her, rose up, stood and began to walk towards the coffin. You would have heard that 14 days after my wedding, my wife died. But before the wedding, we had arrived at the wilderness. Please help me tell your neighbor, may you not be late in the name of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the moment I came out of the bathroom, that part of her that was migrating towards the coffin went on reverse. <laughs> then she made one strange sound. I said, uh -uh, what's that? Then she now told me how her body, I don't know how, what to call which one. Which one is body? Which one is? But I think you know what I'm talking about. She now told me her experience. 
That was how she was delivered from death on the 14th day after our wedding. It means that not everyone that came for that wedding was rejoicing with her. In fact, there were people that left that wedding and vowed that we would not have peace. And they did not, it was not an empty threat. Oh my. But we arrived the testing grounds before the tester. When Jesus arrived the testing grounds, he knew that the being that was going to test him was a spirit. Not just a human being with flesh and bone, but a spirit being. Because of that, he decided to advise himself to begin to fast. Fasting was not the reason why he went to the wilderness. He went to the wilderness to be tested. It was his own personal initiative to begin fasting. Fasting means to starve your flesh so that you can stuff your spirit. You starve your flesh so that when you are under pressure, you will not respond from the flesh, but you will respond from the spirit that has been stuffed. If you know someone that talks a lot, insults a lot, abuses, put the person on eight days of dry fasting. And on the evening of the eighth day, come and say, oh boy, how, how far now? You will not answer. The reason is because the flesh has been starved. So when you starve the flesh, what you are doing is that you are saying that you don't want the environment to influence you. The environment will lose the authority to influence you when the flesh is starved. Oh, you're not with me. When you now begin to pray, fasting and prayer, prayer is what empowers you to influence the environment. Fasting is what empowers you not to be influenced by the environment. So the first requirement is fasting and prayer. There are three more requirements. But I'm going to allow you to study those three so that we can do practical. You must learn how to perpetually establish a custom of continually starving your flesh and stuffing your spirit so that your response to pressure from the environment will not come from your flesh but will proceed from your spirit. In fasting, we take away the handle of control from the environment and in prayer, we receive the handle to control the environment. That's the meaning of fasting and prayer. I'm insulated from environmental control and my prayer puts me in a position of advantage to control the environment. If you understand this, it doesn't matter how toxic your marriage becomes. It is not the water that is around a boat that makes it sink. It's the one that enters inside. You can insulate yourself from environmental control somebody's toxic behavior you can be immune to it and be rejoicing with joy under that circumstance until the person himself wonders what manner of spirit does this one have you become a marvel because you have learned how to tame the environment i'm no longer open to the manipulation that the environment carries I'm no longer open to the power of control that the environment wields, that circumstances wield. Because my flesh 
is carved. It doesn't matter how much you hit on me. The flesh doesn't have any energy in itself to respond. My response comes from one channel and one channel only. That was the lesson that Jesus taught us when he went to the wilderness. There are three other lessons that you need to learn that he exhibited at the time the tester eventually came. Which is for another day. We need to do practicals. Because pastor said we should we should activate something. <laughs> so I want to ensure that I follow the instructions that he has laid out for this conference. Even though he calls me a senior minister. But because he invited me to stand here, I'm standing under his authority. So it's exactly what he envisaged before he called me that I would do. Are you still with me? Now the reason why I preach this sermon is to make you tired of a mundane life that doesn't have power. I've had the privilege of seeing mighty people cry. They will not cry on television. They will not cry in the parliament. But uh, I've seen I've seen them become victims of the pressures of circumstances. And I know that the solution of this to this matter, this is tears. He would have been able to hold on much better if he knew the technology of starving the flesh. So many things will come against you, but the things that come against you are not so important. Like the technology that you need to survive it. When you press us and you think you have finished us, the next day you will see that we have mounted up with wings. <laughs> if you know what grace is, you will know that God did not expect us to fail. Did not expect us. We are going to take a moment. A moment. We have 33 minutes. And in this moment, you are going to forget about your neighbor. We want to focus on the Lord completely. Hallelujah. I say hallelujah. As we focus on him completely, we are desperate, seeking for an activation of grace. We are desperate, seeking for the opening of a new regime of his grace on our lives. For if your neighbor is not interested, don't worry about him. But you, you that is interested, you are going to take advantage of the next 32 minutes. Because what is going to happen here today is that those people that touch heaven, There will be an allocation for them. The prayer is simple. Lord, we understand that without your grace, we are no match to the devil. We will not be able to su survive the darts that will be shot through circumstances and situations designed to malign us. So today, we come into your presence seeking for an activation an activation an activation of your grace somebody talk to the Lord in a moment make sure you are desperate forget about your neighbor forget about your neighbor we seek an activation of your grace we seek an opening in the spirit 
we seek a deposit, an overflow, an overflow. We seek help from the Holy Ghost. Somebody cry to him. Cry to him. Cry to him. Oh, Mahai, Sesi, Kobresko, Falandoro. Yala Mama Sakatala. Enso Bronde, Heketali Mohosalite. Make sure you are pressing in the Holy Ghost. Make sure you are pressing in the Holy Ghost. Zovina Hante Kosketa Brahalam Telia. Rescose sosila hambri scopa bacatala. Yande lorumbri sketo cambela ikos cabelaite. Mantes cose salanto brisco fala hatala. Mahai cambro saca bacateli monsale. Brantes cose sasico bandolo monde. Iaca bronze cateliza ico branta zaminaito. Obre casquetobina santa i copresco falantelia Yama hansa la babora kande Zgabota maske la branta baboli bakadia Menta esco tela brunda hisco sansale Laibro mokoso konde balika bantelia Basketobaya we seek an activation We seek an activation We seek an activation we seek an activation. We seek an activation. An activation of the power of the Holy Ghost. An activation of grace. An activation of a fresh anointing. We seek an activation in the name of Jesus. Jose Cantelia, Suke Bramatala Babonde. Roma seca telia sute branta babola cadia. Mesa selo brez kito branta. Osketa mande coria brabasata branta kode balatelia. Jaminai tombe seca tanda. Labra makata bojaneskide. Brai cascoba sama sala babodia tela. We seek an activation. Breso sela iko banteli. Mahande Kosa, Iko Brabatalia, Iko Skedo Banzeli, Iko Bransala Babotama, Iko Samalantalia, Iko Brescote Manseli, Ante Mondaliko Talia, Esconde la Lanteli, Akande Boboria Samatala, Bracasketo Brante Cusca Bata Mentale, Ale Conde Breketa Mansuketa Branta Baboria. Lala Basia, Lala Lava Santora, Esco Brama Talaba, Basca Tomina Cadia, Yete Keto Kendo, Semania Tiga, Branta Babosketa Manta Bandali, Brahase, Brahase, Rahada Labatua Tecosca, Rante Cose, Brate Bacude Balatalia, we seek an activation. We seek an activation. Lesso Sele Kedi. Let's all sell a cadebonde. Let's all sell a canda brascada. Right up on the Cusa Bacalata. Banda Babote can Samatalia. Ica Prescote Belacudia. Brecanteli. Abacoria Brasatai. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Rode do sike kede kedia, mesquito bamba latalia. Oh, kabo maseli, kalama matalia. In the name of Jesus Christ, I cannot hear your amen. I say, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I beheld the Spirit. And I saw.
saw the angel of the Lord with a transparent liquid. And the angel of the Lord put this transparent liquid on the eyes of one of us. And he used it to wash the person's eyes. saying by this vision is that there is an anointing that is going to come upon someone here and you will begin to see into the realm of the spirit. The anointing will come upon two of you in this congregation. Listen to me. Listen to me. Stop praying. Just, just listen. If you can steward this anointing, you will see the future before it comes. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that your mighty hand will come on these two individuals that you have ordained for them to begin to see through your spirit to see such things that you are doing, to understand things that are yet to come, to know things that you are about to implement, to understand seasons, to understand time, to know when it is time to advance. So I ask, oh God, that from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back of this auditorium those two individuals I ask that your anointing will come upon them 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 it's coming stronger it's coming stronger it's coming stronger it's coming stronger Holy Ghost anywhere those two individuals are I ask that you oh my God it's coming stronger I see a lady and there is witchcraft intense witchcraft in your family and part of what God wants to do is to anoint you anoint you for spiritual warfare and this anointing is a very radical anointing this anointing will take you yeah 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 I see a mantle floating in the atmosphere. The anointing I speak about, the mantle I speak about is a mantle that, that is a mantle for miracles. Anyone that is in custody of this mantle will have the ability to walk signs, to walk miracles. So the handle of miracles come upon you today. There's a special anointing. It's resting upon three people. There's a special anointing. It's resting upon three people. From the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. 
from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet I've seen you four times, four times on this platform. I saw in the future to come. I saw in the future to come. A mighty anointing came upon you. A mighty grace came upon your life. That anointing made you a prince to East Africa. It shall come to pass that some of the greatest impact you will have in ministry will be done on the soil of East Africa. Four times while preaching, I've seen you going towards Kenya. Your apostolic ministry will flourish the most in East Africa. The Lord said I should tell you that. So before I sit down, oh my God, I think I need to come down from the platform. You have labeled in the closet, you have labeled in the quiet places. The things that you have done is not so that you will be seen or known, but you will be known by miracles. Miracles. There will be authority that will thrive on your tongue. When you speak a thing, it will stick hold and it will come to pass. The Lord comes in the open to proclaim your elevation, your promotion, because of the sacred labors that you have put in unnoticed by many eyes grace is given unto you and you will be a worker of miracles let me touch you If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, we will spend a moment just praying. Just praying in the Spirit. Just praying in the Spirit. There are some other things that are hanging in the heavens that need to be downloaded. This is the beginning of a season of unexplainable expansion. Unexplainable expansion in this ministry. I say que lo borro no santeli. Bonde esquito obre mama maya. Rumas que to prante cuse baka bonda baliate. Anta bobo se binahade cuske de hisale. Braceso se la cura batalia. Alaite sobre que de curia brentis. Raka brentis, raka brentis. Ponte esque temina su levantia, copina su patua, presco bandelica, boco taminite. Where is that, my handkerchief? Hold it. For the Lord has asked me to pass unto you. A scepter, a scepter of grace that will speak, a scepter of grace that will cause such that have despised you to see your elevation. The Lord will make it visibly evident that your call is a crown calling and it will speak and many will hear your voice in distant lands because 
of the crown grace that is at work upon you. I pass you the scepter. Listen to me. In this congregation, I have seen a linen garment descending from heaven. Anytime I see this garment, it's indicative of the fact that there's someone that God is preparing to be a major prophet in the days to come. And that garment will come upon you. You may not have seen any vision. You may not have prophesied. But that garment is coming. It 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 is coming. Holy Ghost! From this day, begin to see and hear in the spirit. Now, listen. Those of you on this road, stop, stop praying. Oga, stand up. Eh? So, can I touch you? I will just touch you like this. But when I finish touching you, my hand will not leave you. So, Lord, the one you were talking about, let your hand become strong on that one. Let your hand become strong on that one. Let your hand become strong on that one. Let it be stronger. Let it be stronger on that one. Jose Quilambro. Boy la brasqueto mi la haselima. Ula bresi ke kola manzuli. Muske telo bonde si capremina e tela. Yele kosi ko bresco falinda enzi. There is someone that has been carrying a yoke of the enemy in the congregation. But right now, I command that yoke, break, break, break in the name of Jesus. You are relieved of that body. And you walk free. You walk free. You walk free. Let me pray for you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I ask that you put your mighty hand on your people. Let there be activations of diverse kinds, diverse manners. Let seasons of encounter begin. Such encounter that will consolidate their conviction on several matters of which you've been witnessing to them about. Oh, Lord. Lord, we ask that your mighty hand will go to work this morning and let realities beyond our imagination begin to take place. In the life of your people. Oh! The Holy Ghost is standing on one lady. He's standing on that lady. He's standing on that lady. Oh! Ilabo seki. Ilabo boko sokori abandeli. Ia sobri ala fute mande kura abesi. lady up to the new seasons of grace. Let the silence break. Let the delay end. Let her enter into the next phase. It was men that rejected you, not God. And so the God of heaven, the God of heaven 
has a compensation plan that he wants to implement in your life. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Ah, there's a door in heaven that has opened. A door in heaven has opened. A door in heaven has opened. Yes, some people have been ushered into that door. They have been ushered into the door. They have been ushered into the door. Oh, yes. There shall be a performance of those things that the Lord has told her. Thank you, Father. Can we just pray in the Holy Ghost for a few seconds? Brachidovanas. I'm basking the glory of that which the Lord has done. Tekita vasto fraske papelas. Eskiva rasto vela masko vela moshka paporaste zenevinas. Sige boroski po velaste janamantos ka fila braska pantole siatas. Shabarata mantes ki vinans ke brokoshka paparaste venestasias. Bask in the glory of that which the Lord has done. Get soaking it, get soaking it, get soaking it. Declare unto yourself, I walk in the reality of it. In the name of Jesus. I walk in the reality of these prophecies. I walk in the realities of this. I walk in the realities of this vision. I walk in the realities of this power. I walk in the realities of this anointing. I walk in the realities of this glory. Come on, come on. Make declaration, make declaration, make declaration. Get soaked in it. Zika pompe la stefinantas ke galigos kendale. Jebricos ko pope vina. Eko vina mana ski brasco pocos ke pala brasto venantelia. Zekiko popa raske banantes. Jemanta pacos ke bracas ka papa la kai katana mastasia. Eke de venetele grastasia. Jabarata pacos ke pala casco banate. Jebrico to vanas de gratina mans. Zimantele gratina man. Jebenamana manto. I kept up a rusty villa brantas cabala cascaponia. A yamenamoma, my copo pefelen, create papela ma, a shibinamon cabombe. I kept a lebracos cabala villa mante, exevela brica popevi. I kept a ne, a bricopo pefelevinae. I kept a dico poco pala cascampale, a dova labrinas capopevelae, equapele. I get a venamanta bella moe. I get venate, davanate, venate, davanate, davanate. A capo papa pane monte la bo. A cat vela para penamante. I give you one moment to press into it, press into it. Shaba beba de capombe. I get a breca sopa la be. I go vela pamonai. I get madeba ne mota. I get to sapalai. I get bala caporasca bella cascata. I get vena. I paratos cabena bon calaba. I yapa baba baba de. I cut a leberecataya. I proscopo. I pinamote. I cook venambolia. I cook a vela ba. A quarter de velascapo. I param de velascabile. A parasca bomachi. Woo! Mana mantabumai. Oh, we give you praise. Thank you, precious Lord. Thank you, precious Lord. It has started already. It has started already. Woo! It has started already. Every possibilities that you dreamed about has started already. Every possibility that you have prayed about, they have started already. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name we are prayed. In Jesus' matchless name we are prayed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. Give the Lord a shout and give glory unto the name of the Lord. Hallelujah.
Can we just turn to our pastor and say thank you so much. Hallelujah. Come on, come on. You can do better than that. Hallelujah. You can do better than that. Let us appreciate the Lord. Hallelujah. In the life of apostle. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We are super excited. Amen. Imagine what the evening will be like. It will, it will, it will be, amen. I have no words for it. Hallelujah. I have no words for it. So you want to come prayerful. You want to come deeply lost in prayer. This place will be open up from 4.30. We are praying. Service starts for 5. We are praying from 4.30 p.m. Pre-service prayers as we plug into... Ah, I've been waiting for this word. Kai. Ay. Ah, the word is about to see Jesus. It's about to see Jesus again. In our ministry, about to see Jesus again. Look at how you are looking at me. Instead of you to declare it unto yourself. The word is about to see Jesus through my life. They're about to see Jesus through my life. Through my, ah, yeah, my God. Woo, glory to God. We're excited. Hallelujah. All right, we want to make our offerings and our tithes this Sunday morning. The details are on the screen. We need to wrap up the service very fast. Amen. Hallelujah. The details are on the screen. Please, if you don't follow us on social media, please kindly do. Please, can we lead Apostle? Amen. Praise the Lord. Can we make um, use of the details on the screen? Amen. There are four channels in which we give here. You can use the details on the screen. You can use the envelopes given to you by the ushers. Or you can use a check payable to Eden Life Experience Center. Or you can use the envelopes given to you by the ushers. If you are online also, you can use the details on the screen. Can we just package our offerings and let us pray? And Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for out of the abundance of which you have blessed us with. We bring our tithe, our offerings, our givings into your house. We ask that you receive it, Holy Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. And Father, I bless the offerings, I bless the tithe, and I bless the givings of your sons and daughters. And I ask that in the name of the Lord Jesus, even as they have given today, that the strength will arise unto them from Zion. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. In Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. If you are excited, in Jesus' matchless name, we are prayed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. At this point, I want to call for those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. Amen. If this is your first time here at Eden Life Experience Center, you came on a very good day. Come on. You came on a very good day, and we want to appreciate you. Please, if you are such a person, can you just show by a wave of hands? Is today is your first time? Can you just show? Wow, I have hands all over. Please, our leaders, our members around them, give them a high five. Give them the hug. Say something beautiful about them. Please, can we appreciate them once again? Keep waving, please. We have a card for you. We have a card. Please keep waving. Can we please appreciate them? Can we please appreciate them? Some of you are still under the anointing. I appreciate them. Come on. Glory to God. Thank you so much for coming. Won't be a bother to you. Kindly fill those cards with accurate information. And we'd love to reach out to you. We'd love to be part of your family. And you'd also be part of this great family. And what God is doing here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Are you set to give God the praise for what he has started already? Are you set to give God the praise for what he has started already? Please, can we just stand, amen, this afternoon? Can we just stand? In just five minutes, we all want to give all praise to God. Hallelujah. Then we'll come back for the final announcement. Then we can release us before the evening service. All right, please, can we all just stand as we give God the praise and all the glory? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Why don't you jump on your feet this afternoon as we give God praise?
Jehovah, 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 Jehovah. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final say.
be seated. Just one or two announcements and we are out of here. Hallelujah. What a powerful time we've had in God's presence. All right, we just want to make a um, few announcements. For as many people that are on the island, there's going to be a free bus coming in the evening at um, Abraham Adesoya. We'll be having a free bus carry our people all the way from Aja down to, to church. Uh, the bus will be stationed there by 3 p.m. and then we take off by 3.30 a.m. To, to, today. And also the bus will be available to return our people also back to the island immediately after service. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. In addition to that, uh, God moment continues tomorrow morning by 6 a.m. with pastor. We are still praying. Uh, we are praying till on the 14th of this month. Um, it has been such an awesome time praying and um, setting the month straight. Hallelujah. All right. Um, lastly, just as announced um, earlier, our two Sunday services start immediately after Activate Grace, which will be next week Sunday. So we're going back to the Bungalow Hall. Uh, the first service is going to start by 8.30 a.m. And then the second service is going to start by 10.30 a.m. It promises to be an awesome time. Next week Sunday, we'll be having um, a powerful minister lead us in worship. That's the person of Mark Sam. We're still going to be having that tonight. And it's going to be a glorious, glorious, glorious time in God's presence. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, without further ado, can we please be upstanding as we bring this service to a close? Our closing charge is taken from the book of uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. The book of 1 John chapter 5, verse 12. Scripture says, He who has the Son has life. He who has not the Son has no life. And we say this because we are in hidden life, that because I have the Son, I have life. I have. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please help me out share Pastor Tunde. Amen. So I have someone in our midst, and um, I didn't know that. I, I thought he was coming in the evening. You know, um, I always make joke about him. Uh, the first time he saw me come to marry his daughter, he said that she pastor lo fefe. You understand? And um, you know, I was a bit concerned. I was like, ah, she, she that did my my bad, you know. And later on, I discovered that he's the most loving father-in-law. So I have my father-in-law in the house. Awesome man, chief doctor Femi Sholu at the back. So humble. Man of God, thank you so much. That's Daddy. Amen. Daddy, thank you for coming. Please let me appreciate my father-in-law. If you still want my wife to be at home tonight, praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, we're starting second service from next week. Hallelujah. So next week Sunday, we move to our venue. We have a lovely venue, just a street um, uh, across, just a street across um, GRA, just by the cantonment. Um, next week, we'll host the Mark Sam, which is also going to be this evening. She's going to be around this evening. It's going to be an intense time of worship. Hallelujah. The next week Sunday, she's with us. Then on the 21st, we have Dari Justify. On 21st, we have that just It's our praise and love Sunday. So this April is jam-packed. Join me tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. on God Moment. Every 14 days of the month, we pray 6 a.m. to 7 o'clock in the morning. And um, tomorrow will be day 8. So join me tomorrow. Hallelujah. It's going to be a powerful time. So 1 John chapter 5, verse 12, which was what Pastor Tilly was declaring. Scripture says that he that has the Son of God has life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. Therefore, we say, because I have the Son of God, I have life because I have Jesus Christ I have the life of God again you say with us because I have the Son of God I have life because I have Jesus Christ I have the life of God God bless you please you have a lovely day see you five o'clock God bless you bye